Louie, you hold this one. That's fine. Now, everybody join hands. That's right. Now, you're connected in series. Now, there are five of you. That means that each of you will receive just one-fifth of the total voltage of the eel. Now, relax. We'll give you the low voltage tap first. Ready? <laughs> Did you feel that? Wasn't bad, was it? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to have you meet a group of confirmed believers in electric eels. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, where did that electricity come from? Strange as it may seem, the eel's electric tissue is made up of cells very much like the cells that make up the nerves of our own bodies. These cells are called electroplaques. Here, the crude model of one of these cells. Actually, the electroplaque is a tiny battery, one twenty-fifth of an inch thick. Now, in a flashlight, there are three cells. Each cell generates one and a half volts. Three of them in series produce the four and a half volts necessary for the lamp. The eel's battery produces one-tenth of a volt. Ten of them in series will produce one volt. Well, at this rate, it would take 5,000 of these to produce the 500 volts of the eel. Well, he's got them, and then some. An eel like Joe here probably has 250,000 electric cells. Connect them in series, 5,000 of them, and you have the 500 volts. The rest of them are connected in parallel to build up the current capacity. Now, each one of these tiny batteries has an electronic switch controlled by a signal sent along the nerve fiber connected to it. When an eel wants to shock something, it throws hundreds of thousands of switches all at once just by thinking about it. But what to me is even more amazing is that when Joe's battery is run down, he can recharge them, all of them, in just a thousandth of a second. That's quite a power plant, isn't it? The eel's electrical system is composed of three main parts. The first is called the large electric organ. This is the source of the eel's main voltage. Now, the function of this organ, called the organ of Hunter, is still somewhat of a mystery, although scientists believe that in some way it works with the large organ in producing the double whammy. This organ, called the bundle of socks, is to me the most wonderful. It has been definitely identified as the source of those mysterious radar pulses. In other words, this is the power plant for the eel's radar transmitter. Now, of course, a radar system must have a receiver also. You notice those pits located in rows along the front part of the eel? The other night I was in New York City talking with Dr. Christopher Coates, the director of the New York Zoological Society. Dr. Coates is the world's foremost authority on electric eels. He performed an experiment recently that seems to indicate that those pits are a definite part of the eel's radar receiving system. Now, if Joe is willing to cooperate, he can perform a similar experiment here. The problem is to render Joe's radar system temporarily inoperative. Now, if we paint these pits with an insulating liquid, and if these pits have anything to do with the radar apparatus, Joe will find it very difficult to locate a fish. Well, we won't go hungry. This is a liquid that will wash off very rapidly. All right, Bill, let's go back into your tent. That's right, come on out now, like a good fella. Now, we want to give him a good supply of fish. Uh, 
All right, Joe is surrounded by his favorite delicacy, baby trout. But for the next few moments, at least, those fish are just as safe as if there weren't an electric eel within a thousand miles. You see, uh, Joe's radar is on the blink. Oh, his uh, transmitter's working all right. He's still putting out those radar pulses. Actually, it's his receiver that's not operating. Now, let's think for just a moment about what that means. To a certain extent, we can locate objects with our ears. We can tell roughly the direction from which a sound is coming. But you know, if I were blindfolded, I'd sure hate to try to catch a greased pig simply by listening to its squeal. But uh, this problem, compared to Joe's, is relatively simple. You see, sound travels 1,100 feet per second in air. But Joe's radar pulses travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second. This means that an electric eel's radar system must be able to interpret time difference that is less than one billionth of a second. This is so amazing as to be almost beyond belief. Yes, Joe, you're quite a fellow. You may not win any beauty contests, but you've given us a lot to think about. You've given us a new understanding of the God who made us all.